I'm Joe from VCAM TV Studios, and after watching a marathon of Clean Sweep episodes starring the Yards Hill Diva and Nisi Nash, I decided I could part with a few things of my own. Some of those things include Game Pro magazines I received in the mail from 1998 to 2000. Now, before these things go to the great unknown, I decided to highlight a few special things I've noticed in each one of these magazines. Let's go back to a time where Pokemon was still thought of as some Japanese thing that's making its way stateside. The future looked bright for my 13 year old self. Apparently, this internet thing is going to come to my TV and video game system, thanks to the Sega Saturn Netlink. Finally, I could loan my brother-in-law money without all the hassle involved with that. Between Sega leading the way in internet browsing, and this upcoming DVD-based Nintendo Dolphin system. What else could a teen boy want? How about a top-of-the-line entertainment center? Circa 1999. With that kind of gear, I could be the next Pause the 90s YouTube channel. Pa! I just hope that computer can handle playing this new game called The Sims. Little did I know that I'd be downloading custom Sims objects for a good year and a half featuring re-energizing drinks and WWF skins. You don't know joy until you see Kane walking down your Sim Street at 1am in the morning. And if I was really good and I threw a hell of a party, Drew Carey would show up! Vibe Online was giving me the option to talk video games with hip-hop celebrities. You may end up talking about why Glover looked like the Hamburger Helper's brother with Mace, or Space Bunnies Must Die with Old Dirty Bastard. GamePro pretty much was gospel in what they recommended to me. Even Nickelodeon's face had to get a second job working for Winterfresh Gum to pay for his video game addiction, and I guess Adam Sandler had to steal from NASCAR drivers. For example, I knew to stay away from games like Trespasser. Wow! Look at those reviews. It's getting shredded even by GamePro standards. Look at this, they way underrated Ape Escape. It was the first PlayStation game I ever experienced dual analog. Speaking of classic PlayStation games that only hardcore gamers seem to talk about, it's Rival Schools! A Capcom fighting game? Like a 13 year old me wasn't gonna buy a game made by the Street Fighter guys that played like Tekken, and had this guy in it hitting people with a bat. This thing even had mini games. What? Rival Schools 2? When I was younger, I had to go to summer camp, and at the summer camp, myself and the other kids would exchange games back and forth to try out. Rascal was just a mess of a game. He wanted to be Radical. He wasn't. He wanted to be Mario 64. He wasn't. And that in-game camera made me want to have Rascal killed. I'm sure the Grim Reaper would have come. Apparently he was hanging out cleaning pools. And the other game I remember was Blasto. A superhero game that was voiced by Phil Hartman. You want to see the only highlight of this game? You're right, Game Pro. The suicide button. You really aren't supposed to touch that button. Speaking of death, ah, not that. I mean, this review for the first Grand Theft Auto. It's amazing this game franchise lasted long enough for Tommy Versetti to rock a Hawaiian shirt and drive by pedestrians to flock a seagull's music. Resident Evil. Even a simple pre-order ad had me dying of excitement. At least I hope it was excitement and not the T-Virus. Oh yeah, had these action figures. I didn't just play Resident Evil, I read Resident Evil. Oh, and I also have a Resident Evil 5 snow globe. <laughs> it's snowing in Raccoon City. We all love Resident Evil 2. It doesn't even matter if it's Leon's disc or a club. Elza Walker? The hell? Early Leon even looked more like a boy bander than he does now. And Elza kinda looks like she went to work on the same racing team as Chuck Green. Hold up! I think this is what I'm really good talking about. Leon, Claire, Ada Wong, The Liquor is a pretty good porn name. Of course, I don't need a Resident Evil porn parody. Though, it's not like the acting could have gotten any worse. Stop it! Don't open that door! But Chris is... And look! A sequel's coming soon! Naughty or nice, here comes a Christmas zombie and a Christmas bandicoot! Are you not sure what to get your family for Christmas? Well, the sickos at Blockbuster suggest a gift of gore. Mm, nice gift, Shadow Man. But where's the gore? Nah, you can keep the remote, Mr. Tiger. There we go. That's sufficient enough gore. Ah, Christmas and video games. You want to know the first time I associated the two together? It was 
is one on Christmas Eve. I turned on Rise of the Triad to find the character screen guy with a Santa hat on, and the game playing Christmas music. Shit blew my mind. Kind of like how it blew this guy's mind. I've been playing Pebble Beach Golf Links on my Genesis for a year, and I've noticed that the weather conditions during the game seem to coincide with the weather outside. That is, when the weather is good outside, it's sunny on the golf course. And when it's raining outside, the game skies dump rain on my place. Could it be there's a hidden sensor inside the cartridge that actually checks for changes in the weather it's outside? Hey, maybe you're right. Because there was this boiling hot day and I left my Super Nintendo running for about 18 hours and it was sitting in the sun and the Super Nintendo felt really hot. But seriously folks, games can do amazing things, but predicting the weather isn't one of them. If they could, you'd better hope your game never crashes. Who knows what kind of natural disaster would be lurking outside of your house. Nowadays, Madden will wish you a Merry Ebenezer Christmas, Scrooge or Calendar Man will to talk about specific John holiday Jarvis. stories in Remember Arkham City. Man? Ah, the future. A time before future classics like these were just first looks. Metal Gear Solid, Spyro, Banjo-Kazooie, Ocarina of Time, Sonic Adventures, and Smash Brothers were all just upcoming games. And none of us seem to be living in this future that was told for me. A world where Jaguar lives. And Street Fighter was going to be a theme park ride. And beepers were prominent. And remember Tiger Woods having the South Park pilot written to its code? Here's the only thing great about this game. Oh, when I get that feeling, I gotta sing. When I get that feeling, when I get that feeling, I gotta sing. I was kind of like Michael Jackson there. Okay, hold on. We got one more promise of the future. Oh, and look. 3D Realm says that they don't want to overhype Duke Nukem forever. And it's coming in late 1998. Around the time I was getting these game pros, my other love was wrestling. Game pro and wrestling seem to be intertwined with each other. Here's an ad for WWF in your house. The day after I bought this game at the mall, I was grounded for a poor report card and wasn't able to play any PlayStation for a month. It got locked in my attic along with this cool South Park shirt I had bought, and a WWF Bendy action figure. I think they purposely left the Warrior out of this ad. Oh snap! Look at this early look at WWF Warzone. They even have the old school logo in it. GamePro had a hard on for the Attitude Error. And I present to you the WWF In Your House sex tape. <laughs> Hey, I'm Matt Johnson. Can you do a quick impression of Joey Lawrence for me? Whoa! What a matchup does it! Yeah. The ultimate warrior! Oh. Hit him! Yeah. That was good. See ya, and I wouldn't want to be ya. Look at this. There is three covers in the span of this look back that have the rock on it. You know, they'd even have interviews and publish of Triple H. Cool shirt, Triple H. I thought these games were good back in the day. But, here's my attempt to go back and play these games. Okay, normally I pick Shawn Michaels, but let's go with Ken Shamrock today. I'm feeling... in the zone. They did not hold up. The only thing that holds up is this. This is your punk. That little ass body of yours. Can't pop you to you with the ass whipping. I'm going to give you in the ring. If you want to step up to play team, bring it on. Because I forgot to take my medication in the morning. And I'm in a real bad mood. And to continue with the pro wrestling talk. No, not that pro wrestling. 40 moves. Fit. Cranial Crunch. Sounds like a wrestling cereal. Oh, in true WCW fashion, the N64 games were great. Fresh, fast, fluid.
fluid action, like WCW's mid-card. And the PlayStation 1 games were big, clunky, slow messes that were frustrating and repetitive. Kinda like every main event of Nitro. Remember the NWO and WCW rivalry? It even extended to the video game that... If the NWO wins this N64 matchup, does that count as one more for the good guys? I do have to give Nitro and Thunder credit for stuffing everyone they could as bonus characters. Scotty Riggs, Reese, Mongo, the game's programmers, a human Tiffany lamp. The only thing worth a damn in these games is this. Pick me, pick somebody else, do whatever you want. Leave me alone, quote the Raven, nevermore. Don't kill yourself, Raven. Uh, I am Ultimo Dragon. You're Ultimo Dragon? Okay. 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 No Kelowna in there? Quick, Roddy Piper, do your best impression of a dog looking to get picked in the pound. Pick me! What's wrong with you? I heard Nash! Nash said don't pick me! Hey man, here's Alex Wright, the German. If you want to know what the Germans are about, pick me and you're gonna have a hell of a victory. I promise! Hey man, it's Alex Wright, the German. And if you want to know what the Germans are all about, Pick me, and you'll never be let down again. I promise! Okay, really? WCW NWO Revenge isn't on the level of Warzone? The fuck? Oh no! Lex Luger has flair, and he's not afraid to toss him! Gex316 says, I just... Moving on. Alright, thanks for joining us. We're gonna do a little sightseeing here today. Here's the workaholics guy playing soccer. If you look towards the moon, you'll see a ball that was hit there by Ken Griffey Jr. And in this house, you'll see Richard Nixon with old-timey Vegas prostitutes. There's TV star Lord Zed, the special bike lane we made for Sonic the Hedgehog, and our friends at Target have a little celebrity gossip for you. This famous singer is an avid video game player. At each stop on tour, Whitney's games and game system are the last things packed and first thing unpacked. It's rumored that her song, The Greatest Love of All, was written for Luigi, the Super Mario Brother. You're right, you'll see two sports announcers without pants. And even in the late 1990s, Brett Favre contemplating retirement. Over to your left, you'll see future Hall of Famer John Randall looking at an NFL menu. John, may I recommend you the Tim Couch? It's the hot new food for Defenders in 2000. Ooh, look, it's nice to see Tiger focusing on golf again. There's Bill Buckner playing football. And finally, Sammy Sosa. Oh, and Sweet Tooth getting his car washed. Don't worry, our friends at Target have you covered for the dumb sports ideas. Like, how not to get a wedgie playing Madden. But they should have told me to calm down while playing Madden's 2003 cornerback skill drills on Expert, and not kick the wall and break it. Oh, there you go. Right there. They also seem to think I'm going to drop millions to broadcast an NFL Blitz tournament. With that cheap AI? The meek inherit the earth? Yeah. That happens suddenly with its comeback cheapness. Boy, look at this loser. Dear coach, I'll never forget you. The way you told me I was a fat lard. How hard you laughed at my lisp. The way you summed up my potential in two words. 
marching band. Coach, I can't thank you enough for telling me I'd never play NFL football. You were my inspiration. And if you're ever in town, I'd love to return the favor and kick your hairy butt up and down the gridiron. Your former fatso, Hooper. Hooper looks like it's Pat. Through reading these, I came up with a little theory. The advertisers hated the readers. Look at how many of these advertisements are straight up threatening. Ryu is going to break your face. You're a loser who deserves an ass kicking. Games will have you wishing you were dead. And even if you were to live, one wrong blink will kill you. Well, at least it's not the calories according to Twisted Metal. We're off to murder the wizard. You think Oz is scary? How about 2096 having sporting events where bombs are attached to you? Or this society where people hunt Elvis for sport? How can one be safe when these games threaten to take your life and your limbs? They take you by force and blow your kneecaps out. And guess where they want you to go after they kill you? Hell! And if you want to be the one threatening, apparently you can kill globally. And just like MDK, you can be the one that kills. And opening up a can of whoop ass is actually safer than bike riding, at least according to this ad. Or your wedding day. Let the butt kicking begins was actually an official statement from the Nintendo headquarters. And come prepared, not with cookies and a snorkel, but with swords and ninja stars. And we will use them to poke and bludgeon and disembowel. Now, the job will allow you to travel to exotic places and meet interesting creatures and kill them. Don't worry, the point of this journey is not to arrive, but survive. There's that. And Canada must be destroyed. And do you really think you have any hope when Duke Nukem says you're U-G-L-Y and you ain't got no alibi, you ugly? Yeah, yeah, you ugly? So stuff it, you pussy. Wow, I think this ad hates Teletubbies worse than my dog does. Ooh, a gift card from Target. Exactly how I feel, Ad. Well, if I'm thirsty, Target does happen to have the ultimate game of drink recommendation. Many top video game players swear by this homemade energy drink. Mixed 3.56 tablespoons of coffee, 4.67 cups of powdered sugar, 45 to 46 can caffeinated soft drink, a baker's dozen eggs, and one tub whip, one tub whip topping. Blend until creamy, serve chilled with mint garnish. Okay, I don't know if I have the garnish, but I'm gonna try this. Well, I drank the game of drink, so hopefully it improves my Wave Runner 64 game. Strap yourself in for 64 bits of surfing, dashing, wave crafting, water reaction with Wave Race 64. It's got killer Kowalski jet ski watercraft you can customize and eight slick race courses. Blow jets against another racer in wet, wild two-player action with waves big enough to surf and enough ocean to make a surfer lose his lunch. And don't forget your life vest. You'll need it. Get ready for the first race. Three. Sorry, you didn't accumulate enough points to move on to the next round. Better luck next time. 
Mm, maybe my thumbs need to be improved. Set, go! Okay, I think I did enough thumb exercises and I'm ready to play too extreme. Hopefully I don't get last plays. Cause, you know, the only time I've ever not got last place in this game is against my sister, who finishes last place. <laughs> I just kicked you. Too extreme, or should I say, Premium Rush, the PS1 game, starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt. You know, scratch that. It's this controller that's causing me to lose. Thanks for the heads up, Target Ad. Twisted Metal 2? Oh, I love that versus mode. Of course, a lot of times, battles versus me and my sister would end like this. Yeah, extremely satisfying, right? No, not really. You can't say GamePro didn't warn you of Super Suck 64. And thanks for the heads up, mailbag writer. I think even Target was stealthy in telling you how bad this game sucked. And I think they should have put Superman on this page. Rugrats for PS1 had bad camera angles, but it made up for it with this. Ah, let's talk about some good games for a change. Let's talk about the all-time classic, Virtual Pool 2, which, according to GamePro, is video game perfection. It is better than Resident Evil 3, Crash Team Racing, F-Zero X, Tomb Raider 2, Metal Gear Solid, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Super Smash Bros., Mario Party, and Sonic Adventure. Perfection, thy name is Half-Life. Virtual Pool 2, and Tekken 3. Gone was supposed to be green? Gone is a real backstory? Don't call him a carnosaur. He's been here for years, and his name is Gone. Wow, Game Pro, referencing LL Cool J. And Gone was based on a hugely popular Japanese picture book, which features gorgeously detailed small black and white illustrations by Machi Tanaka. Gone is a small charismatic reptoid of indeterminate sex and species, part dinosaur, part crocodile, and all attitude. Gone tears through his adventures with agility and vicious tenacity, making him a popular character in Japan. Oh! Chicken action figures! I got a few of those! Want some other cool video game facts? How about Target saying that there was going to be a game called Roman's Debate? How about the fact that Austin Powers was telling the truth in this clip? One Swedish made penis enlarger pump. That's not mine. One credit card receipt for Swedish made penis enlarger signed by Austin Powers. I'm telling you, baby, that's not mine. One warranty card for Swedish made penis enlarger pump filled out by. Austin Powell. I don't even know what this is. This sort of thing ain't my bag, baby. This actually was his bag. And how about this interesting tidbit of what happened to Crash Bandicoot's girlfriend, Tana? Well, this certainly answers the question I always had. In the first Crash Bandicoot game, one of Crash's objectives is to rescue his girlfriend, Tana. After he succeeds, Tana drops out of the picture. She isn't mentioned at the end of the game, nor does she reappear in any of the other Bandicoot games. What happened to Tana? Once he saved Tana, Crash realized that as long as they were together, she'd always be in danger. Crash thus made the heart-rending decision to end their one level long relationship, so he could focus his energy on defeating his foe. In short, he dished her. You can reach Tana at her website, www.ihatebandicoots.com. Speaking of Crash Bandicoot, I wish Naughty Dog would take him back and make him as awesome as he used to be. Remember the amazing ads? And the stages where you run from a polar bear? Or getting 10 extra lives when you stomp that polar bear on the main stage? Ah, uh, Crash Bandicoot 2 was perfection. What? It's not as good as pool? They better admit that Crash Bandicoot 3 is the all-time classic that it is. 
Good. Good. I would have been pissed if they said anything less than great. It's 2 a.m. and I'm still playing Time Commando! Put your TV on steroids, but then I'd have an asterisk next to any high score I achieve. Speaking of confusing... Stay off drugs? But a few pages later, get twisted, get high? Remember how much fun it was to torture? No, 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 no. Stop right there, you psychos. Oh, we got our first troll letter. I'm a big fan of both the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation, but I think you people have been rating N64 games too high. For example, you gave Mario 64 a 5 for everything. And I could have sworn I played this game on a Super NES years ago. Sure, this game has some killer graphics, but it lacks major fun factor. And GoldenEye 07? What a joke. Where's the blood in this game? GoldenEye is boring when you play it by yourself. It's only fun when you play with a friend. Maybe you should try playing the games before you give them ridiculous ratings. And not to be left out of the trolling game, GamePro trolled people who wrote to them. Hi. I just want to know if the Spice World game is coming out in the U.S. for the PlayStation. I'm a huge Spice Girls fan, and I'd really like to know about this. I would also like to know the release date, if any. Signed by Too Much 756 via the internet. And here's their wonderful reply. Too Much, you've got to be friggin' kidding us. Now that Ginger Spice is solo spied, we don't care what the status of this game is. Huh? But if you do, check out sneak previews in this issue. We hope to God you're a chick. And when target ads weren't being written by Mike Judge, they would also be trolling. And this kid was sending in a letter about how he was trolled by fellow classmates. Two kids in my school said that they have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the PlayStation. Please clear this up if you can. Game Pro is the best. And what appears to be a teenage James Rolfe wrote in about his hatred of Castlevania 64. After Metal Gear Solid's awesome PlayStation gameplay, here comes Castlevania for the N64, which sucks so badly that I returned it after a week. And speaking of fan letters, we have a big celebrity writing in. I love Tomb Raider 3. I love everything about it. I love its soft, luscious, curvaceous gameplay. I love its tender, yielding, passionate controls. I love the way it feels against my hands. Gently weighted like too firm, right? Sorry, I love Tomb Raider 3. Whoa, relax there, Ellen. Oh my god, that was... Oh my god, that was a letter from Ellen. <laughs> just kidding. That was just part of a feature that they'd have in April magazines called Lame Pro. And it was filled with fake game photoshops. Gary Coleman in Half-Life? That sounds awesome. As does Sonic 8, enough with the running. Superman is 64? Can't be any more slow and unplayable than the actual game it's parodying. Titanic 2, Fuck the Iceberg. Duke Nukem, Time to Quilt. And its sequel, Duke of Hazard. You know, I don't even know why they needed a Lame Pro issue. Just read some of the letters that people sent into Game Pro. That's funny enough. Here's a movie casting that these people decided had to happen. We could have Chris being played by Dean Kane. George Clooney, Tom Cruise, Johnny Depp, Val Kilmer, Keanu Reeves, Tim Roth, Charlie Sheen, Kevin Sorbo, <laughs> John Travolta, Bruce Willis, and Billy Zane. Whoa, Jill. Jill would be played by Gillian Anderson, Drew Barrymore, Sandra Bullock, Nev Campbell, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Melissa Gilbert, Selma Hayek, Natasha Henstridge, Demi Moore, Alicia Silverstone, or Bridget Wilson. Wesker is going to be played by Kevin Bacon, Stephen Baldwin, Wes Craven, Harrison Ford, John Goodman, Val Kilmer, Gary Oldman, Robert Patrick, Sylvester Stallone, John Travolta, Christopher Walken, Barry is going to be played by Tom Berenger, Bruce Bixner, Nicolas Cage, Sean Connery, Robert De Niro, Charles Dunton, Chris Farley, Stacy Keach, Martin Sheen, or Kiefer Sutherland. And Rebecca would be played by Christina Applegate, Holly Berry, Sandra Bullock, Nev Campbell, Claire Danes, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Jennifer Grey, Helen Hunt, 
Jennifer Love Hewitt, or Uma Thurman. Law from Tekken 2 would be played by Adam Sandler. Nina from Tekken 2 is played by Heather Locklear. Paul would be played by Jean-Claude Van Damme. Hihachi would be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yoshimitsu would be Nicolas Cage. Luigi would be played by Michael Richards. Link from The Legend of Zelda is played by Michael J. Fox. Zelda would be played by Jennifer Aniston. So Jennifer Aniston and Michael J. Fox in a movie. Okay, let's wrap this up the way everything should be wrapped up. With a little sexual suggestiveness. Money shot? 